Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome to this um, Sabbath Prep Friday where basically we surrender something. And so currently, if you haven't been with us, welcome. And those of you re returning, welcome. And those that are here for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're on a series within a series. Basically the series is the 90 day destiny transformation where we're starving our past and our history accepting the life that Christ died for us to have, and also pursuing the purpose with passion that Christ um, sanctified and ordained us for. And so we have the series within a series is motivation or motivators or and motivators. So basically, you know, earlier in the week, I was talking about basically like choosing something to motivate you to this new life. And also as you choose something, you might have to over and over again to choose the life, you know, so you might have to find, you may find that the things that you choose to motivate you um, could be changing. Like I explained where um, there were times where I use being a young mother and my child as a motivator to try to live right and be an example for her. And then as times went on, it became different things. My parents, my mother, God, you know, just to be an example for the young people, you know, and so eventually it got to the point to where it was for me. And so when I think of like surrendering something, check out my other YouTube y'all. Um, it is the Pursuit to Christ and the playlist on that YouTube and this one, this one being Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous. Um, I have something for everybody, relationships, marriages, singles, food, hair, you know, you, you name it. There's a lot there. Comedy. So check that out. Okay. Um, and also subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, we are moving fast. I believe, I want to say that this is number 60. Eight, I think it's 68 and we're going to 90. So you will want to subscribe. We've been having a ball. Okay. Check out the other videos in um, the series. And so, okay. So when I think about the past life for me and probably for you too, it's riddled with a lot of hurt, pain, shame, you know, um, regret, um, also, um, frustration, disappointment, and all of that, you know, and sometimes, um, you know, those of us who have dealt with like uh, different types of abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, you name it. And so a lot of times those things have a way of giving us an idea, a false, a false idea of who we are. Um, sometimes we walk away from it and we feel, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a lot of shame to the point where we're left feeling like we're nothing and we're nobody. Now, if Satan can get us to think that we're nothing and we're nobody, then the choices that we make don't matter. Um, and a lot of times we don't feel like we deserve anything. And so we look at ourselves as a result of our past and our history. We look at ourselves as second rated. And with that, a lot of times we think that we can only have a second rated life. Sometimes we even look at ourselves as damaged goods. Now, if you don't know, my name is Sheila Rollins and I'm the founder of Sheila Ministries Entertainment and Associates, Inc. And on this YouTube, we are overcomers and not as we support anyone desire to overcome anything. And we do it with Jesus Christ being a higher power and also what he's accomplished for us on the cross. Therefore, our wholeness, our cleanliness, our completeness, the things that we thought were impossible becomes possible with Jesus Christ. But in order for us to get all that he has, we need to be obedient to his word. And I encourage the King James Version because it's what he encouraged me. The Ten Commandments, including the Fourth Commandment, where he admonishes us to keep the Seventh Day Sabbath. These things are binding on us for eternal life. The arrow next to the title is the description. All this information will be in there. And look it up, okay? And, you know, maybe comment on it. You know, what you thought 
what you read in the Bible, and I encourage King James from, you know, so what you read and all that. So, okay. So, I kind of like compartmentalize um, sin, you know, so to me, it's like we deal with a battery of different types of sins, but I, we can categorize them different ways, okay, presumptuous sins, where we do them and we say, God's going to forgive me. I'm his daughter. Why wouldn't he? So it's like taking advantage or being abusive of the love, the, the grace, and the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God. And then we have secret sins where on the outside, we holier than thou, you know, filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues and all that. But behind closed doors, we're dilly-dallying in sin, okay? And then we have, um, um, I don't mean to say special sins, but cherished sins, that's the word, cherished sins, the sins that in most cases, the cherished sins are the ones that we were brought into, like, let's say sexual victimization. For me, I was beat to made to eat. And so there's a bond a lot of times with a caregiver or with a parent, you know, or somebody that we love over a cherished sin. Um, and however, God has called us to be followers of him, followers of Jesus. When Jesus called his disciples, he says, follow me. And he called them away from a lot of things, in some cases, even their occupations, okay? And so the same thing with us, you know, if you think that the life that you have lived in the past has brought you a lot of shame and pain, why not try Christ? Why not from here on out, go that way. You know, why not try to see what better life the Christ has for us, okay? What ha he has for you. And I'm going to tell you something. I am all into the cold turkey thing. When it comes to stuff now that I know that I'm doing and I'm doing wrong and it's impacting me in the most negative way and be a bad example for somebody else. I'm into cold turkey because why initially cold turkey feels terrible. And it seems like the other way, like a little bit coming away a little bit at a time, deciding when you're going to stop and all those different things. You know, this week you do it 10 times, next week you do it five, and next time two, and then you eventually. Now, I find that that way right there has kept me in it too long. But however, I find that when I do cold turkey, it means stopping abruptly, leaning on God, keeping still and dealing with the demons that come, you know, whatever that comes as a result of not doing a particular sin, okay? Um, we don't. Nobody never died from temptation, even though it feels like it. But even with that, God says, that, yo, yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because Christ is with me. God is with me, you know, and so he's promised us that, he will be with us. If we will confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, you know? And so when I think about the deliverance that God has blessed us with, that's one, you know? And then I think about like, the Bible talks about like God giving deliverance for those who all of their life because of the fear of death were in bondage. Okay, and so we have deliverance, and so all we need to do is accept it. And so I want to, when I talk about starving our past and our 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 history, I mean like not allowing our abuse to be in the driver's seat. You know, not allowing the voices that came as a result of our abuse have any dominance in our life at all. 
and to lead us any kind of way. You know, not allowing somebody else's thoughts of us, you know, be in the driver's seats of our life, you know, or even something else that somebody else has, wants us to do. God has ordained all of us and sanctified us for a special purpose in his kingdom, you know, and so that thing that we were brought into is for the glory of God. As we give those things back to God, God will give us beauty for ashes. And we will stand as a testimony as if those things never happened. And when we would tell our story after that, it was if it would be as if we were talking about a long lost friend, like a friend from years and years and years ago. And as a matter of fact, when people look at us, they won't believe that the things that we've been through, we won't look like what we've been through. And so therefore, when people, when we tell our story, it's going to be incredible. Do you know what incredible means? Hard to believe. Okay. And it will be, you know, but anyhow, um, so God has a lot for us. You know, it's like when I think about restoration, and that's what God wants to do for us. You know, when I pray in the morning, I pray, God, restore obedience in us. And I have a long list of people that I'm praying with along with myself. And I pray first and I ask God to, you know, that I would be connected with all of my brothers and sisters of the faith and all of those that would be my brothers, sisters of the faith so that this prayer can get through. And then I commence to praying for restoration for everybody, including you, my viewers, you, my subscribers, you know, those that are following me and those that would be, and even those that walked away, okay? Um, and those that's on the fence thinking about maybe, you know, following the work that Christ is having me to do. Um, you know, I pray for restoration, that our obedience will be restored, that our love will be restored in God, you know, um, that we would accept the life that Christ died for us to have, you know, that we would, our hope, our help, our confidence, our trust, and our faith would be in, in God. And as a result, our joy, our peace, and our happiness. And as a matter of fact, the Bible talks about those who keep the law of God, happy are they. And so, and I like that. And when you think about it, it's like, when you do something that you know is wholesome, it's good, and it's right. The feeling that you get compared to doing something that's wrong. You know, we are not damaged goods. God still has a plan for our life. No matter what we've been through, no matter how low we've been, we can never go lower than what the grace of God is willing to go even lower to save us. You know, so do not delay you know, in surrendering sin, surrendering your history, surrendering your past and allowing Christ, you know, to come in and connect, to connect you with the plan he has for you, the purpose that he has and to the passion that he has as well. You know, the Bible says that uh, without a vision, that the people perish, you know, for lack of a vision. And so what I would do a lot of times is the thing that I want to pursue in my life, I choose somebody that's ahead of me, already ahead. And I use them as like, not that I want to be like anybody else or anything like that. It's basically like to get me from maybe I'm complacent, maybe stuck, you know, or anything, get me moving out of that place. I use it as a motivator and motivation, you know, to move me, you know, out of the way. And so the whole comparing ourselves with other people, you know, sometimes we do that. And a lot of times we fall on the short end of the stick because we compare ourselves with people that maybe their experience hasn't been like ours. You know, maybe they haven't had the kind of life that we've had and, and possibly we haven't had theirs. But anyhow, God has a life 
that is ours, only ours. And so we need not look to the left, the right, or anything. We need to keep, look up. If you feel like you're down, then look up. And when you look up, you'll see, you'll see Christ and you'll see, you know, that his, his word is true. The things that he said, he's going to do. The Bible talks about the gifts and the calling of God is without repentance. In other words, he's endowed us with gifts. You know, he's endowed us with talent while we were sinning. We're still sinners, even with gifts and talents. We have plenty, you know, people that sing, preach, and all that. And it doesn't make them any more closer to God because they can do those things. Now, it's something that when we use our gifts and our talents for God, who gave it to us, okay? Don't tarry, y'all. Check the description. I'll have all the texts of scripture for this video in um the description okay so let us deal with surrendering the secret sins the cherished sins the presumption sins um and also those sins that have us bound to people even our parents our caregivers as a result of maybe a wrong way that we saw them do a wrong way that they forced on us, you know, taking control out of our hand. That's the thing. When we come to God, he's promised that he would settle us. He would strengthen us and he would establish us. So let us not use any else excuse. Let us not delay, but let us come on, come on and partake of this life that God has for you. This is all that I have for you. I love you. You know, um, you know, sh sh please share to YouTube and cover subscription as you share. And remember to um, to give me some thumbs up. OK, thumbs up. Help the YouTube. Let me know what you like. And it gives me the confidence to keep putting out more videos. And I love to hear you. So comment, you know, you can ask a question, you know, you can um, tell what you think. Do you agree with the video? You know, um, <laughs> did it help you? OK. Or you can just say hi. You know, either way, I love to hear from you. So please comment. Now, and to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next YouTube. And check out those ads, okay? See you in the next YouTube.